everyone it's Emily welcome back on my channel today's video is going to be the continuation of my MAC lipstick collection series where I go through all my MAC lipstick by finish and I let you know which ones are my most favorite ones the ones I regret buying etc etc by finish so that way you can see me wear one of each finish throughout one day so you can see how they perform because it's one thing to hear me say oh I love that lipstick but if you buy it not knowing how the formula performs you might not realize that it's super drying and if you have dry lips that combo. Basically it just gives me the occasion to talk about lipstick a little bit more because when I do a lip swatch video I don't get the chance to talk about the formula in each color one by one. Speaking of lip swatches, I'm not doing lip swatches in this video, I'm just going to be swatches on my hand. If you want to see lip swatches I will link down below the ones I've done in the past and there is one huge one coming up in September. So for that occasion, I'm letting you vote in the comments of each video by finish. You can let me know in today's video being ritual matte finishes, which ritual matte lipstick you want me to purchase to include in that big lip swatch video. That way I will be able to do all of the ones that I will have in September. Now enough rambling about what this series is about. Let me continue. Like I mentioned, today's video is ritual matte finishes, which is one of my favorite finish from MAC. I love ritual matte finishes. They are drying, so don't recommend them if you have super dry lips. They are a little bit of a pain in the butt to apply because they tend to tug your lips a lot. But once they are there, they almost look like velvet. It's nothing looks like this. It's almost like liquid lipstick in a tube form. It's they look flawless, basically. So let me go through the lipstick that I have, letting you know which ones are my favorite ones, do I regret buying some of them, which ones I would recommend, etc, etc. I have eight of them. I believe one of them is considered a matte, but I'm including it in the retro matte finishes because I consider it a retro matte finish. I don't know if they change it online. I will put it in the screen if they did because Sin is really, really similar to MAC Diva, which is a matte finish. And the biggest difference between the two is I feel like Sin should be a ritual matte finish because it has the same formula as any other ritual matte finish. <laughs> so this is what Sin looks like. It is one of the best vampy fall type of lipstick. Let me swatch it. It definitely tugs on the lips, but the finish is incredible. Look at this color. Like if you were still looking for the perfect lipstick to wear during the fall, it would definitely be one of the colors I would recommend. If you don't mind a dryness, because they definitely tend to be drying after like five hours, you'll definitely start feeling it. Personally, I really don't mind drying lipstick, so this formula is just the best because there's almost zero transfer. So it's basically liquid lipstick in a lipstick tube, like I was saying. It's just the best formula ever. And this color is absolutely amazing. Definitely do not regret buying this. I need to wear this more often because this is the best vampy shade ever. <laughs> It's also really opaque and like even. I feel like sometimes deep shades tend to be uneven on the lips. I don't have an issue with this one. And like I was mentioning, if you want something a little less drying, I would go with MAC Diva, which is just a little bit lighter and is more creamy because it is a matte lipstick, but you will see that at the end of the week when I swatch the matte finishes. Let me go with the next one, which is probably the cult favorite red lipstick. Everyone knows this color. When you think about MAC Ritual Matte Finishes, usually people think about Ruby Woo. And as you can see, this has been well loved. It's like really, really flat. And it's just the perfect red lipstick. It suits pretty much any skin tone. Every time someone is like, oh, I can't pull off red. I always recommend trying this one because it is a like pure neutral red. It's not too pink. It's not too orangey. It won't clash with your skin tone. And it's just a great, great red. Again, formula might not be for everyone, but this color is just amazing. I adore this lipstick. Clearly I've used this a ton. Absolutely recommend it. Every time I want to wear a red lipstick that is super low maintenance, I don't have to constantly check in the mirror if it moved around if I ended up looking like a joker. Won't be the case with this lipstick. It's absolutely amazing. Totally recommend it. Definitely one of my favorites. To be honest, most of these are like my favorites. Back in the day I had done a MAC uh, Top 10 MAC lipstick and most of the retro matte finishes that I own were in there. And if I were to like do an updated one, let me know if that's something you would be into. I should definitely do that. Most of these would still be in there because the formula is just that good. Let me go through all the reds at the same time so you can see them next to each other. Okay, these two are fairly similar, but there's definitely a difference and you will be able to see it if I swatch them next to each other. The first one is all fired up and it's the perfect pinky red. 
if you feel like, oh, I can't really pull off pinks, but I wish I could wear something a little bit pinkier, I would recommend this one. It is definitely really, really bright, but it's not white base whatsoever. So even if you have a really deep skin tone, you can easily pull that off. It's so beautiful. You just can't go wrong with this color. Absolutely love it. I, I mean, there's nothing to say. Look at this. This is amazing and that's just it. <laughs> The other one that I have is Relentlessly Red, and if you look at it just like that, you might like, mm, that's really similar. But if I swatch them next to each other, you'll definitely be able to see the difference. Let me swatch them. This one is a little bit of a white base, it's not full on white base, and it is more curly. You can kind of see it. It's definitely a little bit paler, a little bit more bright. There's almost a little bit more warmth in it too. Hopefully you can see it well on camera, but another amazing color. This formula in general, I tend to gravitate towards, but this is one of my favorite ones for sure. I love that one clearly. Again, I've used this a ton. <sighs> There's not much to say. It's just awesome. Same thing with, let me grab the other one. Actually, let me finish the red ones, and then after that, I'm gonna talk about the other favorite one. This one is the color Dangerous, and it is one of my least used, but also most recent that I've purchased from this finish. <laughs> Did I mention the color? The color is called Dangerous, and as you can see, it is more of an orangey lipstick. So if you feel like you like orange lipstick, but more orange is too bright for you, or Lady Danger is too subtle because it's like a pinky orange, a reddish orange, Dangerous would be a color I would recommend. Because of the finish, I find it easier to pull off than more orange. More orange is a little bit more, is an amplified finish, so it's definitely more creamy and shiny. And I feel like it's more in your face than a matte finish. I just think personally that matte finishes are like the easiest way to pull off a bright shade, clearly. <laughs> I like that finish for that. But this is amazing. If I had to choose between more orange and dangerous, I would go with dangerous because of the finish. I just feel like it's much easier to pull off. But again, if you're looking for the perfect orange lipstick, I recommend this one because it's not too yellow base, but there's enough red in it that it's still somewhat easy to pull off. So I would definitely recommend that one too. This one, I don't know if I would say it's my favorite, but it's definitely up there in that finish. And it is flat out fabulous. And you might be like, whoa, this is purple. Hear me out. If you are just starting out with purple and you want something that is somewhat easy to pull off, there's enough pink in it that you can pull it off, I would recommend this one. Again, the finish makes it super easy to wear. But as you can see, it's purple, but it's not like it's more fuchsia than like bright purple. It's amazing. I love this color. I have obviously worn this a ton. I love wearing it with the uh, MAC lip liner in magenta. It's a purple one, so it makes it just a hint more purple. And it's the perfect combo on your lips. I pretty much always wear them together because they're just perfect together, but on its own, it's also amazing. And clearly, again, I've used this a ton. But yeah, every time someone is telling me they want to wear like a bright purple, but they are scared to start, Flat Out Fabulous is the one that I would say, go ahead and buy it. And then the last two are the ones that are fairly recent in my collection, but also the least worn. And they were part of the uh, MAC matte line that they came out with a year or two ago. And they're permanent. All of these are permanent. All of the ones I'm talking about are always permanent. And they're my least worn because they are more white based. And I feel like they're a lot harder to pull off. I wouldn't recommend them to a lot of people because of that. The first one is the color Steady Going, and as you can see, it's a bright pink, but again, white base. As you can see, it's a really nice bright pink, but because of the formula, it does tend to emphasize more dry patches on your lips, so I wouldn't recommend it if you have dry lips, although the whole range wouldn't necessarily. And it has a little bit of warmth in it, so if you feel like, oh, it might look a little too bright baby pink, there's still a little bit of warmth in it but definitely one of my least worn. And same thing with the other one, which is the color Runaway Hit. And this one is kind of a really peachy nude shade. If your skin tone is a little bit warmer than me, this is definitely gonna look more like nude. If you have a cooler tone, it definitely turns a little bit more peachy. And I look at it right now and I'm like, why do I not wear this more? Because even right now, this would look amazing. So I guess I have no excuse for not wearing it more. I guess it's a great thing that I'm here talking about every single one because it makes me remind myself that I love that color. But again, because of the formula, lighter shades that are a little bit more white base tend to emphasize more dryness. So not something I would wear on a daily basis, but actually it looks gorgeous. Definitely don't regret buying these two, but definitely at least worn. Now the real question is, Emily, which one are you gonna wear today? 
I kind of feel like one of these two would definitely be Flat Out Fabulous or Relentlessly Red. See, this is when I wish the videos were live so I could be like, let me know which one I should wear. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be going with Relentlessly Red because it's so bright and fun. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see how much it tugs on your lips, but also how good the finish looks. So let's do this. Like as you can see, it's not that bad, but it definitely pulls on your lips. And it's like really hot right now, so like it is warm. If it was really cold, it would definitely tug even more. Which, by the way, should have exfoliated my lips because you can see some dry patches. Mistake. But when I say exfoliate, you can use your toothbrush or just a makeup wipe to do it. Let's try again. Hopefully you can see what I mean by the texture. It like looks absolutely flawless on the lips, basically. Velvety is the best way to describe it. It's flawless. It looks like your lips are naturally this color. That's how much it sticks to your lips. I'm gonna do the transfer test, but just to let you know, at first it definitely will have a bit of transfer, but throughout the day you'll see there's gonna be like little to no transfer, which is the best thing ever. Let me do this. So as you can see, there's some transfer but definitely a lot less than that would be if it was like a creamy finish or something. So yeah. Oh, and by the way, they stain like crazy, which definitely helps with the uh, longevity of it. Now I'm gonna go on with my day and I'm gonna be updating you throughout whenever I have been wearing it for X amount of hours. You can see how well it uh, survives throughout drinking water and then a meal, etc., etc. So I will see you a little bit later. I'm about to eat a sandwich, but I wanted to update you before I do so and it affects the lipstick because you might be able to tell it looks exactly the same. I've been drinking water and you can see there's like nothing. There's like no transfer whatsoever. So it's still looking great. It's been like two, three hours. I will update you after said sandwich. <laughs> so I've been wearing my lipstick for almost five hours now and I wanted to update you like you saw earlier. I had a sandwich, which was delicious, but sandwiches and lipstick do not go together. Like it's the worst combination ever. Usually if you're wearing any like creamy lipstick, they will be gone after that. But that's kind of why one of the reason I wanted to eat that and then show you the lipstick because this lipstick, since there's very, very little transfer, it helps so much when you're eating like a proper meal. Obviously if you're eating like, you know, like, like <laughs> just the teeth and not the lips, some lipstick will stick. But most of them, uh, if you're eating a sandwich, will be gone, but not this one. So as you can see from up close, uh, there is some fading at the corners, but I mean, I had a sandwich. And if I just close my lips and smile, it's pretty much like 95% flawless. I can't expect more than this from a lipstick and that's even pushing it. So these lipstick will be there after your meal for sure. As you're eating, there's gonna be a little bit of transfer, but it's mostly because of like the food touching your lips. But drinking water uh, on a glass of water, there's like no transfer. If I try to do one right now, I don't know if there's gonna be. Do you see something? Like maybe the tiniest little amount? So they are transfer proof after like the first, you know, couple minutes. So it's still feeling super comfortable on the lips. I know I was saying that around like five, six hours, it starts feeling more drying. So far, I don't have an issue with it. I have to say I'm someone that I don't get like dry lips easily, but around six hours is usually where I start feeling it a little bit, but I can still be comfortable for a couple more hours. So I'm gonna go through my day and I will update you a little bit later. This is probably gonna be my last update because it has been like 10 hours since I first applied the lipstick. I had another meal, bunch of water, lived my life, and I wanted to update you. So this is what the lipstick looks like. You can see that it has faded in the corners, but overall, I don't think it looks bad for 10 hours. It is starting to be on the drying side, but once again, I'm personally not easily affected by this. So this is what it looks like now. 
Personally, this would require maybe like minimal touch-ups or like if I'm out and about, I kind of don't really mind it that much. The only thing with this lipstick is that you can't really like just spread it out a little bit. At this point, it's like almost a stain, but there's still a bunch of color on your lips. So I'm going to be removing it, but I think it's pretty easy to see that it's still everywhere-ish. So I have my makeup wipe. You can see that there's still a bunch of color. So as you can see, even after removing it, there was still obviously a lot of product. There's still some that will be left unless I use like waterproof makeup remover. Personally for me, this is a plus. It just means that the lipstick will stay all day and it doesn't fade weirdly. A little bit on the side if you eat something that will, you know, affect it like eating something super greasy or eating like a sandwich or something that will rub all over it. But if you're eating carefully, you can wear this lipstick for 12 hours without having to touch it up. So it's kind of why this formula is just one of my favorites from MAC. You can't go wrong with it. If you don't mind lipsticks that are on the drying side, highly recommend you check out the Retro Matte Finishes. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I will be linking on the screen other ones that I've done because this is my fourth one. I will be posting all of them like in a row that way you will be able to see all of them before I'm able to do the lip swatch video in September. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which Retro Matte Finish I should buy. I'm not even sure if I don't own all of them. If there's one that I completely forgot about, please feel free to leave it in the comments because I will have to buy one for the list watch video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't miss any future ones and I will see you in my next video. Bye.